Hey guys, how's it going? And in today's video, I will be going over seven different ways to build passive income streams, some of them being pretty lucrative, the others being extremely passive with not an insanely high payout. I did choose a seven because I think that you at least can start one or two of these. And I can guarantee you can at least start one of these just in your situation that you're in. And I've honestly been really excited about building passive income sources over the past couple years. And as I've been learning more, it just becomes more of a reality the more I learn and the more money that I'm making from passive income. So I wanted to make this video probably for people that are either A, making it already and looking to add some additional sources of income into their stream, or B, you don't have any passive income at the time and you like to start building a source. Uh, to be honest, like the hardest part is initially starting. I remember when I was 17, 18 years old trying to build some sources and I just couldn't figure out like how to start, you know? Like I watched all these videos on the stock market, but I was like, I really can't even figure out like how to buy a stock. And then like when you buy a stock, like what do you do with it? Not that stocks are the only thing that this video is about, that's just an example. That being said, I'll roll right into the first idea and it is going to be related to stocks. It's actually gonna be dividends. So dividends are essentially a, a payment that the stock will pay you. The company will pay you for just being a shareholder of the company. So what that means is we, when you buy a share, let's say the company Coca-Cola, for example, if you buy one share of Coca-Cola for $45, they're gonna pay you like a dollar every year. So it'll be split up between four different payments. So you'll get like a quarter every couple months. Now I know what you're thinking, you're like a quarter is really not much at all, but like think about this. Say you get a paycheck from work every week and you buy one share every week. Essentially, every three months you're getting a paycheck of a quarter. Well, the next paycheck is gonna increase that payout to 50 cents, and the next payout's gonna increase it to 75 cents. And over time, this really does build up, and then those payments, say like 75 cents, will buy even more shares, which will make you more money over time. And it's just an insanely really good way to, you know, you can diversify your investments really good by this because you can buy a bunch of different companies and a bunch of different companies that pay dividends and essentially you'll just be diversifying your portfolio and building passive income at the same time and that's kind of a win-win situation one of my goals in the next couple of years is to own enough companies and stocks and you know positions to where i can get a paycheck every single day from a different from a different stock or a different company or like a different fund for example i think that would be incredible and it's actually 100 percent possible because there's a lot of these fun <clears throat> there's a lot of these funds that pay monthly which is awesome because you get a paycheck each month from them but most of them do pay quarterly some of them only pay twice a year so you really got to do research on what you're looking into but it's pretty cool you essentially if you really actually like what it made it your goal you get a paycheck every single weekday that the market's open and i think that's just an incredibly good way to make some passive income and it's just so easy now to be honest like you download the Robinhood app on your phone and it's just an app on the app store you literally can start buying stocks like today like literally today it's so easy the access to it is incredible rolling into the next one is actually going to be affiliate links now this is going to be probably the less the least common uh way that's actually realistic for you on this list and an affiliate link is essentially I'm actually gonna, I actually have some on this video. If you look down in the description, it has different items. Like you can go buy them on Amazon. Basically what it is, is you're promoting products for different companies. You may see some people do middle level marketing for companies where they're saying, oh, go be your own boss, buy these products, join the team. Essentially those are affiliate links and when you buy through their link, they get a cut of what you're paying. You can do this with a bunch of different companies from Amazon to literally like so many different retailers have these it's just it just depends on what you're going for you can actually notice these a lot of the time on facebook and instagram because people are directing you specifically to the link on their page or the link in their description or their biography so it's pretty easy to spot but it's not a bad idea because if you're going to buy the product anyway my, why not make your friend a couple extra bucks and vice versa if they if your friend wants to buy a product and you happen to be an affiliate with the company then you know why not get paid that's a pretty unrealistic like it's not that it's not that unrealistic because I'm sure some of y'all do have a decent following on social media, but a lot of you probably don't. You know, it's not super common to have 5,000 plus followers on any given social media site. I just thought I'd bring it up because it's extremely passive. Like literally, once you put the link in to like the description or whatever, it kind of just runs itself. I personally, I make a couple bucks a month from it, but I mean, I haven't touched my links in like a couple months, so it's just extremely passive and super easy. And it's one that I use personally. The next one's going to be real estate. This also has a higher level of entrance. Now bear with me because I know that the past two have been like high level of entrance, 
but honestly, real estate is really lucrative and there's so many good benefits to it. There's so many good tax benefits to it as well as income benefits because of the write-offs and in the investment perspective on the real estate itself, everyone says, well, you know, they're never making any more land and real estate typically does appreciate with inflation and depending on the area that you get in, if you get in at a pretty good area, you can actually, you know, like increase three to 5% a year for a pretty good amount of time. And considering that you can either A, live there or B, rent it out, there's just so many opportunities with real estate. And honestly, it's just a really good, it's just a really good option. If you ask anyone about real estate investing, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of millionaires, I mean, even billionaires that are into real estate investing. Like I was talking about earlier though, I'm gonna to touch back on the whole dividends thing because this is stock market related as well. Say you can't buy a house or a property, they do make these things called real estate investment trust, which they're called REITs, R-E-I-T, R-E-I-T-S, um, real estate investment trust. And essentially it's like a stock. You can buy it on like any brokerage app, like Robinhood, Vanguard, Fidelity. And what it is, is it's like a big company that essentially is the fund. Like if a stock is like, the like if you buy a share of a stock and it's for a company, buying a share of a REIT, is essentially buying like a position in all of the the that group of assets. Like, say this trust owns 20 plus houses. If you were to buy, you know, a share or whatever, whenever one of those houses goes down, you would the share would go down. Therefore, your val the value of the stock would or the value of the REIT would go down. If that makes sense, there's just other there's ways to invest in real estate other than buying physical properties. Is what I'm getting at. I don't want to get into REITs too a whole lot, but but yeah, that's pretty cool. The next one's going to be monetizing social media. This is insanely, I mean, this is key at this point just because of the age, like the day and age we're in. It's 2020, and if you're not a big fan of social media, I'm not gonna knock you for it, but if you are on social media and you're pretty enthusiastic about it, then it might be worth your time to do some research on how to grow on it and how to monetize it. Me personally, I've grown some Instagram pages before that have, I mean, I've had pages between 50 to 80,000 followers, and. At any given moment, I could look through my DMs, my direct messages, and make between like 20 to 40 bucks just to promote someone or someone's company or something. In high school, I was doing this because I was, I was honestly spending way too much money than I should have, and so I, I started doing this for fun, and you know, I was like, oh, look at all the followers I have. Once I started making money, though, it's pretty cool because it was like I'm going out to the mall with my friends, and I don't want to spend like 100 bucks out of pocket, and so I would just hop on my Instagram DMs I'd make like $75 in a span of like, like literally 20 minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes. All it takes is you just posting their stuff with the information they want, send them payment information. And it's very easy. Monetizing social media is a huge thing. And the, the great thing that's passive about it is like whenever you're not on it, it's still growing. You let, If you post a picture to Instagram, you can get off the app and people are going to continuously like it. Whenever you're on a scale at which social media is making you money, essentially likes and follows are money. I mean, if you want to look at like if, if you want to be real with yourself, the more followers you have, the more people are willing to pay you to promote businesses and stuff. So every time someone follows you, you could essentially be getting between one to five cents worth of value to your um, social media business per se. So say you, you know, wake up after you take a nap and you got like 100 more followers. You just made a dollar from sleeping if you really think about it. So there's that monetizing social media. It's only getting bigger. And I, I'm not here to tell you Instagram is the way to go or TikTok is the way to go because there's going to be so many different changes in social media over the next like 10, 15 years that me personally, I don't know enough about it. What's going to happen with the game. I just know that you should be monetizing it if you want to make an easy source of passive income. From my personal experience, Instagram is the easiest, but people were saying TikTok is easy now, so I mean, that might be something I have to look into. The next one's going to be e-commerce. Now, this takes a lot of work up front, but it's extremely passive, and if you do it correctly, then it can be pretty lucrative. Me personally, I made about five grand off of e-commerce doing Shopify dropshipping. It was pretty cool and all, but like it's, I kind of, I, I got really lucky on the product that I used, and it's really tough. If you want to build, like for example, I'm kind of going to go on a tangent here because this is just something that I'd like to talk about. When I was a senior in high school, I didn't know a whole lot about business or like online businesses at all, but I was like, I want to make a lifestyle like t-shirt company, right? I want to sell t-shirts. I want to be the CEO. I mean, I thought I was like, I thought I was so cool in high school because I ran a t-shirt company, but I was so stupid because I remember saving up two paychecks from working at my, at my lousy restaurant job 
not lousy. I'm pretty grateful for it. But I saved up two paychecks when I was in high school and I paid $800 for 100 t-shirts, about $8 a shirt. I was selling them at about $16.50 a pop. So, you know, I was making pretty good money from these t-shirts. I wasn't selling an insane amount because no one knew what the brand was, but you know, I was out 800 bucks, so I kind of had a determination to sell the shirts. I honestly didn't stick with the business. I only sold like six, uh, five, six hundred dollars worth of the shirts, and then the, you know, I lost the rest of the money. And I learned a lot from the business opportunity, and that's really what the value that was offered to me from that was. Long story short, though, like if I did what I, if I knew what I do now, know now, then it'd be totally different. There's no reason I should have spent eight hundred dollars on T-shirts. You can literally sign up for Shopify for thirty dollars a month, and you can do print on demand. If you don't know what print on demand is, it's essentially wherever, whenever. No, like the shirts aren't going to be printed until someone physically pays for the shirt and places an order. There's many plugins that do this. Many people that you know fulfill the orders print fully, all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. It's something to look into. If this is something that interests you, you can essentially just make money when you sleep because once the website's up and running and the marketing is ran on autopilot and everything's done, then it's, you know you just let it run on autopilot and you make make pretty good money from it. You can drop ship trendy products and market them on Instagram. That's a really popular method. Or you can make like an actual brand out of it, have an actual marketing strategy. I mean, the sky's the limit. E-commerce is absolutely insane. So it's just something to look into if you're interested in making passive income. It's a, it's not a bad idea. I mean, you might be confused because you might have seen some e-commerce videos on YouTube before and you don't really know like if they're too legit or not. But it definitely is a very, you know, solid way to make passive income. I mean, I remember whenever I was drop shipping what it, the products I was doing and I remember waking up one day and I had made like $600 and that was like absolutely unfathomable to me. And then I went to a shift at my job and at the end of the shift I looked and I had made like three weeks worth of my paychecks just like while I was working just from the e-commerce website. So like it's not a bun like a lot of the people on YouTube are falsifying numbers and you know, talking about fake numbers in order to get you to sign up for courses. But if you genu genuinely just do the research and educate yourself, it's a lucrative business to get into. Um, the next one's going to be building a business, which is kind of what I was touching on on the last one, but this is more of like an in-person kind of thing. So if you were to build a business in something you enjoy, right? Let's say you enjoy, like, let's just go with a landscaping company. Cause I have a friend that, you know, he's 18 years old in high school and has a landscaping company. and this is going to be a source that he's going to that he's going to make passive here pretty soon. So you know, my, my friend likes mowing yards. He likes doing physical yard work to each their own. It could be whatever. So essentially, he's been building this business up. He has clientele. He has regulars that he cuts their yard. He mows their yard, you know, every two weeks, every week and a half, what have you. He's built this business up to where he's got like 60 plus clients and the business brings in pretty good money. At this point, he's going to be going to college next year and he's like, I don't have the time to, I'm not gonna have the time to be mowing all these yards. So he hired some employees and now he's literally, he might not be making as much because he's, you know, he's got some overhead since he has people hired, but now he just has a business that he owns and it literally just pays him and he doesn't have to mow any yards anymore. I mean, he just, he simply just, it's very, very little management once you get it all started. It's kind of like e-commerce. It takes a lot of work in the very beginning and then it's kind of on autopilot. And so he's built this passive income source very easily. I mean, you can be 16, 17 years old and start working on a side hustle and something, something very simple like landscaping can turn into something very lucrative. Rolling into the last one, it's actually going to just be something simple and you're honestly probably gonna like this one, it's savings accounts. And you're like, well, I mean, I know savings accounts make interest, but like, is that really a big thing? Well, you probably aren't signed up for the right savings accounts because a lot of people don't think savings accounts make that much money. But I mean, it's kind of a bad example. I mean, it's not a bad example. It's actually an amazing example because of the how how passive it is. You know, rates have been cut down because of everything going on in the world right now. But essentially, like their savings accounts before the everything going on in the world right now, my savings account rate on Ally Ally Bank was two point two percent. So if I had like ten thousand in the account every year, I'd get two hundred twenty dollars total just from having the ten thousand in the account. If you do divide two hundred twenty by twelve comes out to you know roughly like 20 bucks a month give or take and like that's just from having money in the account so like if you're gonna have a rainy day fund it doesn't make sense to not keep it in one of these accounts just for you know just for passive income sake I mean I keep I was keeping a thousand dollars in uh, my ally account just because I, that's 
essentially like three months worth of my bills. There's no problem that can pop up in my life that's more than $1,000 to fix. So that's how much was put in my rainy day fund. I didn't want to get caught off guard and I didn't want to have to pull from investments. A lot of people will tell you save up three months worth of income. I mean, I'm not gonna get into the whole personal finance aspect to it, but regardless, I had like $1,000 into this account. And you know, each month I was getting between, I wanna say it was like $1.75 to $2.25. And you're like, oh, Lucas, this isn't even like an insane amount of money. Well, it's not, but like considering I literally didn't have to do anything for it. I mean, that's pretty good. Like imagine just being told like every month, hey, you can get two free dollar meals from McDonald's. I mean, free is free, you know what I mean? It, would, it, it just doesn't make sense to me that people don't capitalize on this and they just have money sitting in their account. I have friends with literally forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 plus just sitting in like a Bank of America or Wells Fargo checking account. And I'm like, you can literally be earning like, like, like $60, $70 a month. And I mean, $60 to $70 a month is nothing to bat your eye at. You can do like, that's probably like three or four like nice meals out to eat. And that being said, this is all seven of my passive income sources that I have to bring to you. I didn't want to bring any that are super unrealistic. I feel like all of these are pretty obtainable if you actually work towards them. And I personally am working towards accomplishing all of these. I have a good amount of them knocked off the list. Some of them I did have, but I don't have at the moment. So I'm trying to build them back up. I just thought that there's a lot of people that want to learn about passive income. So, you know, why not make a video over it? I think this video is pretty valuable. And uh, I actually did get, I f did forget one last source of passive income. I can't believe I'm this foolish, but the source of passive income that I forgot is actually to smash the like button. Yeah, smashing the like button, it just uh, it statistically increases your chance to make passive income. Joking, of course, but no, seriously, I mean, these videos do take me a while to make, so if you don't mind smashing the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, I'm probably gonna end it here, you know, subscribe for future content, all that stuff. So uh, yeah, have a good day.